So here we are, live, Friday at 11-ish. Hi, I'm Kevin. I'm Rusty, Springfield Leather. We're going to do a little bit of a... The only way you could describe this is an extremely off-the-cuff beginning to a little series of how to use some certain dyes and finishes. So in lieu of the fact that we discovered that we bit off a lot more than we could chew when we thought we were going to start this particular session. Uh, somebody else did that. <laughs> we, we've kind of adapted here on spur of the moment. And what we're going to do is try to accomplish two things, maybe three. First of all, we're going to show you a relatively new product, and that's called our Fenici Water Stains. Yeah. And that is intended as a shameless plug for a new product for Springfield Leather. We hope you like it and buy a whole ton of it. That, that's fine. But we also want to make people aware that the world of leathercraft has changed a great deal over the past few years. And one of the things that's changed is the technology that has to do with, with dyeing leather. And the products that have become available to to me and to you. So I'd like to start out with something that to me is just absolutely amazing. Would you hand me the black, Rusty? Black. Now, whoops. again, this is a water stain. How do you get this open? It's got one of those child. You squirt this stuff? Uh-huh. I would recommend shaking it first. I'm going to put the lid back on, and following instructions, I'm going to shake it up. Now, as a longtime leather crafter, and as a longtime person that supplies other leather crafters, I've had to deal with, with one thing over the years that has never changed, and that is the, the challenge that comes with dyeing a piece of leather black. There. My goodness. It's just like the bane of every beginning leather crafter's existence. So do we have we don't have a bottle we can dip we gotta, we gotta use this thing? You gotta use that thing. We now, don't have to. I guess you could squirt it on the table. <laughs> not everyone here is all that bright, folks. We're gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna take this happy little piece of import leather. It's very white. And I'm going to take this thick water stain. You kind of see how it, well, I you're, guess you can kind of see it. Left. Okay. I'm going to put this happy little dauber in here. And everybody knows that you cannot dye a piece of leather black with a dauber with very much success at all. It just doesn't happen. I'm not a dauber fan. And I am not a dauber fan either but I'm using one in case you haven't noticed it's a little bitty one smushity smush smearing this thing around hey you didn't duck when you went on well that's because <laughs> just Chad pushed the other camera <laughs> our camera switcher just switched real fast our engineer is on the fly too <laughs> okay that's one pretty pretty darned heavy coat and and it's it's drying i don't know how well you all can see it out there but i'm using the drier part of the dauber and we're just and by the way i'm kind of a dinosaur i grew up not using gloves uh you want to use gloves please do it'll probably make your mother happier i brought some in case you wanted i know you did i just hate gloves so I didn't read the instructions. Rusty. I know. How am I doing? <laughs> well, you need to wipe that off, bro. Well, I'm going to do that. That was my <laughs> instinct was to wipe this thing down. Now, you guys have seen the amount of time that we've we've gone through. And you'll notice we are working on a paper surface that was not unintended. A happy little paper towel here. You know what? It's black. That sucker is black. 
one coat, black, water stain. I I am, and it's smooth and it's nice. You see a piece of that canvas over there. <clears throat> this is somewhat unique, not completely, but it is somewhat. This has a wax in it. Just a little? Just a little bit. And once you get to the, to the dry point, it will begin to burnish. You're kidding. Nope. So I can burnish it with this? Yep. That means I can burnish it with a rag. I yep. can burnish it's, it with... It, it's not quite set yet, but yes. Well, that didn't come off. No. And you can also take water that over didn't top come off. of it. And it won't come off either. Can you see, can you see my finger? <laughs> That's incredible. Now, I, I'll give you, some people are not going to be impressed with this, but I think a certain number of you will be. Because this is just not an easy thing to do. And remember the kind of leather I started with? I started with a piece of import leather, white, which is even harder to dye black. So, you know what we have done? We have accumulated accumulated a dye sample chip for our new Fenici dye that we can show people and say, this is how that color comes out. I want to try another color. All right, let's see. I want to try a, something like a, what's another color that's hard to do? Um, green, maybe? Yeah, um, or even the yellow. There's yellow. pine green in there. Uh, yellow's all the way at the end. Here. Pine, yeah, where's it? Pine green. Right there. There we go. Man, so where does, not, where does the I would have need, I could have from? used a tenth of the dye. I know. It'll start to burnish up, is it? Well, I'll be boogered. That is incredible. It's starting to burnish. Maybe you can't see that. Wow, that is is glorious. Now, so to answer, let me let me answer that question real quick. Uh, Fenici is produced in Italy. So this is an Italian product, uh, and I don't know if you're familiar with the Italians, but they do some really nice leather. They're fussy. They are. They are. And they do. They make wonderful products. We've been trying to actually buy this for a number of years, and uh, it just hasn't been hasn't been able to be a happening thing. So we're gonna try a little bit of green. Now this time, I think I'm going to be smarter, yeah. which there was only one way to go. <laughs> Figured I'd save you the trouble Thank of you. saying that. <laughs> okay. Do, yeah, do it right there. Wow. I, I'm, I'm really impressed with that. Well, here's what's really cool about it is, okay, clean. I hate to admit this, but I will. <clears throat> this is the first time I've used this stuff. And you, you probably saw how little I put in here. You sure I didn't just put the black in here again? Right? Watch this. Holy cat. So you can control the depth of color by how long you let it sit on there as well. Okay, so you can also get different effects. Right. All right. So you can also cut it with water. Well, that's glorious. So, so something that I noticed, though, that when I've used it is, is that I, I've told you folks in the past to uh, wet the leather, and that'll help you to get a, a smooth, even coat. It doesn't seem to benefit or detract in, in the Fenici. Well, I was going to say, I put this on there bone dry, and I would have thought, how, how could you not end up with, with lots of streaks here? Well, if you keep trying, you might. I'm not trying to get streaks. I'm so far <laughs> doing pretty good with my hands. 
So we got a question here. Great. Um, the, it looks more like a gel than um, a runny kind of liquid. I know that when we did the yellow, it was a little bit thinner than what the thicker. Yeah, pig, yeah, pigmented yeah. Um, was. It is. It is a little gel like. What about? I got a paint. I brought a paintbrush. How about uh, painting or multiple colors? You know, to get a multiple color kind of look. Okay. Wow. So mix that up good and then try that. Shall I add some to it? No, I wouldn't. I would just stir this down into it. Here, hang on. I don't want to use that whole piece. These are our dye chips, remember? You're afraid we'll run out of leather? I don't know. We got enough? <laughs> you know, one thing we could do is use a razor knife. Holy buckets. That is a hard, tough old piece of leather. Okay. Well, that's very happy, right? Oh, wow. <laughs> Voila. Okay. Green straight out of the bottle. Not dry yet. Green with a little bit of water. Now, boy, that penetrated nice, too. It does, too. too. And it... it It'll lay on there, and you can just watch it do its thing. Uh, the The pretty cool thing about it right there is is that it doesn't necessarily build color. I mean, you can get it on there pretty even, but let it sit there for a couple of seconds, and it's not even a 50-50 mix. There's more water in it than there was dye, but the pigment is pretty heavy in it. So that stayed about the same. Right. Okay. So, so it, it, if you want to build color, then you need to add die to it this would be amazing for those of you that like to do figure carving yeah that was kind of my thing when i was doing a lot of leather work for money back in the day what were you doing for money leather work oh, it's, okay. called, it's what we oh, do okay. here right this uh <laughs> i have a question can we you can it use be uh be used as an edge coat uh, no there, there is an edge coat uh, in the Fenici line yeah well i shouldn't have said no so vehemently. You can use anything you want as an edge coat. It's just that some things are happier than others. And the edge coat that they make is uh, fantastic. Is, it is, oh, it's glorious. And all this is gonna do is dye the edge. So if you do choose to use it as an edge coat, you'll have to put some sort of a wax on it. Uh, I'm about as steady as Gene Wilder was in Blazing Saddles. <laughs> If I recall. Yeah. <laughs> you had a way to calm himself down, though. Yeah, well, you know. <laughs> well, I don't know that that's going to help me right here. Okay, it's so water you're, you're down painting down a happy little cowboy boot. Right. But your, that leather has been so compressed. Right. Well, I got to do that, too. I don't not paint. I'm not going to do that. But it, it works like a water paint. Well, so I have an idea. Or like a watercolor, rather. So There's a block. No, I don't want the block. I want uh, a dauber and some yellow dye. Okay, I can do That's that. That's good. We just had a request for yellow dye. Perfect. And actually, it comes out pretty good. Okay, where's happy little dish? Does it work on all leathers? All veg tan leathers. Did you catch that? All vegetarian leathers. I, I believe it even says that on the bottle. Yeah, I think it says unfinished. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure I can get it open. It's childproof. Child I've, I've already had it open. I just... Okay. Here's a, here's a question. I have no idea what Mop and Glow is. Mop and Glow is it's a... a floor wax. Yeah, it's a floor wax. What about it? Can you use it? Can you use Mop and Glow on top of it? Uh, I'm sure you could. It has a wax in it yeah. um, that will cause it to burnish, uh, but I'm sure you can. You should be able to put just about any finish over it that you want. Yeah, How since it's water. You? you don't even know what mop and glow is? Jeez. I was, well, we were talking about leather work, I guess. I just didn't uh, realize yeah. that we were going to finish flooring. Hey, no, it is, it is funny. Uh, uh, especially old timers, man, they'll use anything they could get. And so uh, you find very unique things 
Okay. Being used in leather work. Uh, I had a customer that used to come in all the time, and he would make his own dye out of walnut holes. That's the pit. What? Not this. Walnut holes. Oh, I... <laughs> I have stained leather with walnut holes, and that should be a last resort, folks. Or it could be a, an experiment for homeschooling. And if I was going to use walnut holes, I would use rubber gloves. Okay, now this I do want to be dry for what we're going to do next. That That is glory. Well, and that's a pretty dark piece of leather to begin with. This leather is, is what we call, uh, I don't know how well you can see this. Uh, we have some embossed rodeo design leather. Maybe you guys can put a picture on the screen later or whatever, but it's got some happy little calf faces and cowboys with ropes. Well, you'll try anything to sell that leather, won't you? <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> It's got some bucking Bronx and cowboys and barbed wire and rope and all kinds of happy cowboy stuff. So a bunch of brands on there. And it has been compressed. Oh, my gosh. The embossing plate that was used on this was probably three foot by four foot. And it, and it had 500 elephants sit on that to get this that deep. It just was. It, it's really down there. So it's really out there is what it sounds like. It really is. Uh, and this will show you the difference. Uh, this leather has been compressed with heat, which makes the dye look different. And that's a point I'd like to make. Everybody asks, they come in to buy a bottle of dye from us, and they say, they look at a bottle on the, the display shelf, and they say, what, what color does this come out? I say, oh, I don't know. I can't tell you. It depends on what piece of leather you put it on. If you put it on a piece of Herman Oak, it's going to be one color. If you put it on a piece of import, it's going to be a different shade, totally. And if you put it on something that's been embossed like this, that's going to affect it even more. So. Can I take a guess at what you're going to do? I was going to try and block dye this. You're not going to let me take a guess? Like I did back in the 70s. This was great. Back in the 70s? Yeah, some of you old timers out there, you might remember a product called Nature Tan. And if you don't, you're not missing a lot. But Nature Tan was basically a leather that was pre-dyed orange. It came about because uh, the tanneries had a fair bit of leather that was it was very low grade. Uh, it was low grade. It had so many scratches and scars on it that they couldn't hardly use it for anything. So they had this brilliant idea. They buffed the top almost completely through the grain. Not quite, but almost. And then they dyed it orange. Well, and after that, they dyed, you, they promoted the idea of dyeing dark brown dye over the top of it after you stamped it. And that worked just fine. You could not tool it. It would not, it was stickier than, than a fly strip. You couldn't drag a swivel knife through it hardly at all. But uh, once, once you had stamped it, it worked pretty good. And then you could put this other color on top of it. So what I'm gonna do is take a happy little sponge. Now, this is gonna be challenging because this has got that, that it'll work. How about a, a brown? Espresso hazelnut chocolate. Oh, hazelnut, brown. I love to be exotic. Okay. Should have had a hair dryer. Oh, oh this will work. I don't, can can they see this, guys, or not? Set it down on the table right there, and I'll find it. Okay. So I'm going to take my happy little hazelnut dye here, and this time I'm not going to put it in a a cup, although I I could. It would probably or be, you could put it on the table and be smart. Well, that's not a bad idea. Hey, hang on a second. That's what I said at the beginning. <laughs> we have not very bright people here. Now you're putting it on the table. All right, I'm gonna put it on my. Wah! I'm gonna put it on my sponge and my finger. I like it on my finger quite a bit. And on the table. And on the table and on the sponge and doggone it. Oh well. Okay, this worked. I. I know what this one is. This says, what's a fly strip? What's a fly? <laughs> <laughs> um, Great way to get flies. Yeah. Okay. So we got our, our table messy. And now I'm going to take my sponge. It has a little bit of this stuff on it. Is it a happy little sponge? Probably not anymore. Um, 
I'm going to wipe off, as you can see, most all of that dye that I put on that sponge. Maybe not quite all, but it, I want it to seem like I got it all off of there. Then I'm going to start working up from the corner of this table. I don't know, did, can you see anything? <laughs> not anymore because you moved the leather. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, follow me. Maybe I could do it like this. Here, here's a block of wood. Follow Kevin on Twitter. Now, as you go around this, you're going to see the edge start to darken up. And what you find out in very short order is whether or not you have enough dye on your sponge. So we'll put just a little bit more out here. And since I am working with this for the first time, this will be a bit of an experiment, but I can tell you it's going to come out just fine. Uh, if you moisten your sponge too. I don't like to moisten my sponge. Uh, you can do that and it will work. But you can work around the edge of your product. Now there's an alternative to this and the alternative is very very happy actually. It's called an airbrush. Darcy asked about can you down here. Yeah, well, I don't want to hook up an airbrush to do this. So you'll learn within just a few minutes of how much dye you can have on that sponge and how you can apply it. Now, the edge part here is not hard to do at all. This you'll looks get like a that. sunburst guitar. Yeah, it gives you a sunburst effect, really, it kind of does. And then as you, as you go around this, you can start working your way in towards the center of your design. Now, when you get that the way you like it, then if you wish, you can start to go over it. And it has to be with a, this part has to be done with something dry. This sponge is dry. You can, wrap a rag around a block of wood. Do the same thing. Russ, you did yellow on yours. I did. As, as well, right? Oh, leave right there. Oh, sorry, sorry. Well, and the challenge that I've got is, is I've got it wetter in some spots than I do others, so it almost looks a little uneven, but that's what I was hoping for, to get it dry. But, but you can see the contrast that you get, and it's really pretty nice. Now, this particular piece of leather, the design on it is pretty busy. That's not necessarily very happy. But when you do a border, like a veiner and a camouflage tool, or perhaps you do a simple western floral pattern or something, man, that really stands out and looks nice. And I'm pretty impressed with uh, the way that this works. If you use other dyes, alcohol-based dyes, you have to be a lot more careful a lot more careful because it is way easier to get too much dye where you do not want it. This also, for what it's worth, made a pretty nice dark brown edge here. It's kind of feathered fairly nicely. You can do it with an airbrush and get a much more graduated, faded, feathered look. So when we do our wallets and things of this nature. Did you graduate? One of us obviously didn't. <laughs> Did I graduate? Anyway, you can see what an airbrush will do. And this will do the same thing. This is pretty cool. I'm, I know, right? I'm just goofing off now. This is kind of fun. I'm getting paid, too. So you died... Uh, was I died. That, yeah, I, I messed it up. But what, what was it? Was that a piece of? It's the import. Okay. So I want to see. Is this our yellow hazelnut? I have yellow over here. Yes. Yeah. Let's see. There's fuchsia, espresso, chocolate brown, red, navy blue, blue, mahogany, tangerine. Uh, mixing the color. Sorry, didn't mean to cut That's you okay. off. That's okay. I'll just shut up. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, I, so Mixing the colors is pretty friendly, too. How do you know which one of these was which? Black. It wasn't that. Must have been this one. So, I did want to see the yellow on a piece of Herman Oak. 
Rusty, the one that you did was on import. import. And I've just taken some of his hazelnut and just played around with the edges of it. So this has yellow in it? It is yellow, yes. <clears throat> uh, I'm being able to get a consistent color switching from one leather to another, that's something else that has always been uh, a challenge for leather crafters over the years because they go somewhere and they buy a piece of leather and they, they work with it and they have what they have. And so six months later, they go someplace else and they buy a different piece of leather and they work with it and they dye it. And how come it didn't, my, my leather, I used the same dye. It didn't come out anything like it did last time. Boy, I've heard that enough times. And the reason is not all leather takes the dye as evenly as the last. I can see where, please remember, you guys that are watching out there, dyeing something with a dauber is the least friendly way, in my opinion, to dye a piece of leather. Using a sponge is better. Using an airbrush is best. Assist. <laughs> Well, I, I am just impressed with how this... And that's straight out of the container. Straight out of the container. Well, and, I, and again, I've played around with okay, mine. Okay, so on... this has been played with. Yes. But still, you yeah. see the difference in the colors. Same dye. Import leather. Herman Oak leather. Hmm. Man, this leaves... <clears throat> you know what is... And, and this is just a personal thing. This is something that I am kind of happy about. That's pretty cool. Right? You got a little splurge there. Just just that little dot right there. Wow. Did and I put the wrong one on? I don't think it no. And and lefty's over here with fuchsia. Oh no. <clears throat> hmm. Well, Sorry if I bored anybody. So death, what did you get? Red and fuchsia? I no, am. fuchsia and then watered down. Oh, fuchsia. I got you. I got you. I got you. I really made myself happy here. Well, hey, that is half the battle. Doesn't oh, take much. <laughs> that is half the battle. You can't get him. So I can tell you right now, if you would put Aussie's leather finish over here, mm -hmm. you would you would have or mop and glow. Mm. <laughs> the only issue with the wax finishes are, uh, well, you have some potential issues there. Hey, where, where is your camera at here? Oh, right there? Yeah. Well, hang on just a second. Wow. You are messy. <laughs> Yuck. But the thing is, though, is is it doesn't. It still stays pretty fast. Yeah, that is. Well, it needed to have set. Yeah. And needed to have. Well, we didn't put a finish on it. Huh. I would recommend putting a finish on it, but it does have a wax in it to where it will burnish up. So anyway. Well, that and the finishing just... line has finishes as well. Yes, they do. And top coats. Yes, they do. Gloss and matte. And edge coat. Yeah. And in case you're wondering, the, what do they call their, their edge coat? Diamond edge finish? Yeah. Their diamond edge finish is the type of thing that all these high-end handbag makers, Prada, Coach, and all these people, that's what they use by hand on their high-end bags to get that nice painted edge. That's, that's the stuff. Look at the way that you can get the, wow. So if you take and burnish, That's great. Yeah, if you burnish the top of it, yeah, just hold it right there. That is great. If you can generate a little bit of heat with it, <clears throat> boy, it just pops it. Just pops it right up there. Gives you a two-tone finish with one dye application. That is cool. Well, hey, 
I need to wash my hands. Well, I do too. There's a. Uh, we've 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 opened up. Uh, opened up a pretty big can. Quite a door of possibilities here. Right. So. Any of the any of these things that you want to see a little bit more, this is what this uh, series is going to be. It's going to be about us getting our hands dirty and uh, just showing you some different techniques. What potential issues is there with wax finishes? Wax is subject to humidity yeah. and lack thereof, and also to cold. Yeah, uh, you get a you get a heavy waxed leather. Uh, and if, if it's outside or it's stored outside, it can uh, it It'll can turn white. Come to the surface. You need to take a hair dryer, heat gun, work it back down into it. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, anyway. So until next time, like I said, that's a nice pink. It that is a, a nice very pink. very nice. I'm impressed. So now it makes me want to see what you can do with these other colors on different dyed products. We got more questions about airbrushing. Okay, what about them? Fire away. Can we airbrush it? Yes, you gotta cut it. Water it down. Uh, water it down. Yes, you gotta cut it with water. Um, you'll find the consistency that you want. I'm, I'm not gonna get too carried away because what tip do you have in your airbrush? Yeah. What, all of those things. What altitude are you at probably affects it too, to be honest with you. So ultimately, yes, cut it with water. Um, don't be afraid to play around with it. It, it, it. A little bit of this stuff goes a very long way. So it says if it repelled the water, how is the top coach finish applied and set up? It didn't. It didn't necessarily repel it um, because it, it, it did absorb it. And if you're if you could see it, it's hard to see it. Yeah, bit but keep, you can see where it's at. Keep in mind, he burnished it with a piece of right. canvas. So that kind of closed up some of the fibers to start with. So most of the water did run off. The other thing is though is, is a lot of times if you wet a piece of leather or a rag on one, you'll pick up dye pigment off of it. That was more of what I was hoping to, to show. Yeah, once it's in there, it's kind of in there. It's there. Yeah, that that is. And this is, this is wiping out a lot of that watermark too. Uh, but you don't, you're not gonna reactivate it. That just blows me away. But you can see why you'd want to put a top coat yep. on it, and uh, nothing wrong with that. I think if we let that water sit there longer, it's going to soak in. There. Oh, yeah. No, it will. Of course it will. It, will. Yeah. it doesn't matter what leather you leave water sit on. It's going to... Some pretty cool-looking colors that I haven't really seen leather dye before. That fuchsia was the one that I was <laughs> impressed by. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know. By way of maybe closing, I'm pretty darn happy that we have this and can offer it to folks. I think it will make a lot of people's lives a lot easier when it comes to getting a color that they want. Yeah. Well, and like I said, it's it's very friendly. Uh, you, you can always add more color. That's what I tell a person. Uh, start off with a little bit of the dye and a little bit of water and put it together and see what happens. Well, I know one thing. When I was doing leather work in my garage and selling a million belts a week, or, or well, quite a few, and they had to have black. And going over it with that dauber and coming back after it had dried in 15, 20 minutes and seeing those streaks, oh, there ain't no streaks. Nope. None. Uh, I believe you could get a gray, too. Well, that would be another issue. Well, I mean, with the black on a light leather, I, I believe you could get a gray if you really tried. Just water it down? That's where I would start. I might use a little bit of white if you can. Oh, wait a minute. They don't have white in this, do they? Well, I didn't say they did necessarily, but <clears throat> there are other white. What's your acrylic? Pull, pour some black. Where'd my water go that I had? I got a little bit. Oh. Well, there, there's white acrylic. That's, that's water-based. That's my point. I wonder if we could. I uh, don't know. Well, we don't have any white acrylic. Not on me. See what happens though. Use that dropper that everybody's fond of in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, for what it's worth, I mixed white acrylic dye with alcohol based dye. And they say you cannot do that. Yes, you can. That is a lie. You can do it. You can do anything you want. It just might not be what you want when you're done. 
But for my particular application, it gave me this wonderful sickly underwater yellow green. <laughs> <laughs> Way to sell it. <laughs> it worked great. It gave me exactly what I needed. That's not gray. That is gray. If it's not gray, it's gray. That's gray. Is that not gray? Okay, that's charcoal. Okay, well, <laughs> well, beggars can't be choosers here. I mean, well, but but I'm very impressed with this end because you had almost no dye and some water, and it still came out that even. Right. That. You know, you're not very careful. I'm not very careful, but I'm fun. I, you probably have to ask <laughs> somebody else about that. Well, it's taking a nice shine, I'll say that. I, I tell you, to be honest with you, as that dries, I would probably be pretty happy with it as a gray. Yeah, I think I would too. You're not as dumb as folks say. Then you're talking to the wrong people. <laughs> <laughs> Put down there on the table and I'll get a good shot of it. There we go. So what size bottles are we using here? These are... Look like about 8 or 12 or... Eight and a half ounces. How much do you uh, pay? Two hundred and fifty milliliters. How much do you pay for a bottle of that? How much do I pay for it? No, how much? I don't buy it. I I don't you uh, no. I, if you wanted to buy a bottle, if you're I want retail for it, eighteen dollars. Twelve ninety nine. Well, what's the wholesale? Fifteen dollars. I'm reading. What are you getting your numbers from? Twelve ninety nine is the wholesale, isn't it? I don't know. None of these bottles say that. Must be on sale then. Oh. No. Could well, let's well put an introductory sale. I like it. Twelve ninety nine. That's what you pay. <laughs> That's what the website says. Good. <laughs> Jump on there and get it before we change the price. Yeah, no <laughs> joke. And then uh, also come in a bigger bottle. Uh, yes, comes in about a quart. A liter. Yeah, yeah. liter. It's Italy. Yeah. All right. They don't know quarts. <laughs> Isn't that a rock? A little humor. <laughs> Very little. <laughs> Rock jokes. <laughs> All right. Again, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, look for us again next week. Uh, I don't know what we're doing next week. Yeah, but I we'll be a lot better up. prepared because there's only one way to go. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're going to be doing um, finishing up the saddle repair that we have. Uh -huh. I've been working on flattening out some pieces and starting to cut some new stirrup strips. And get our blevins hooked up. I heard that he has had some pretty good interest in those videos. Yeah, that's awesome. Fun. And we'd that's like awesome. to get into some specific methods of uh, antiquing and some other things. So I'm in here playing around, getting set up, and Denny comes in with this belt that he had just finished carving. Done. Hey, you guys want to dye this? <gasps> no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> He's trusting. I know. Anyway, thanks again. See you next time. Bye.